So Hinduism and Buddhism teach that the law of karma is a universal law of cause and effect that affects everyone. As Newton's third law of motion states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The law of karma operates automatically and without prejudice. This is why there is no injustice. We think that some people get away with everything, we get away with nothing. And that makes us chafe a bit and wonder if there is a just God. We have to simply be at peace and remember the scripture, vengeance is mine, I will repay, thus saith the Lord. Therefore it is ours to forgive, God will mete out his justice, and we certainly do not wish harm upon even those who are self-styled enemies. Karma functions on an individual as well as on a group level. As the 20th century Hindu yogi Yogananda wrote, the cumulative actions of human beings within communities, nations, or the world as a whole constitutes mass karma, which produces local or far-ranging effects according to the degree and preponderance of good or evil. The thoughts and actions of every man therefore contribute to the good or ill of this world and all peoples in it. There is then such a thing as personal karma, something very personal, between you and me alone, one by one, and then there is group karma. Entire nations have made karma because of their stand against life. Many kinds of situations where people as a group agree upon things, commit acts together, and therefore must re-embody together millions of people coming together. It has been said and it is true that America is Atlantis come again that most of us lived on Atlantis and are here to make right those things that we didn't do right and to have our victory. Atlantis was a teeming continent with great advances in science and technology. So many of our scientists today who have come forth with inventions have already invented them before on Atlantis. I'm sure that if you read the book by Phylos the Tibetan, you will understand that you have lived on Atlantis and you are here to complete a major part of your life story. We have a tremendous opportunity today to do that. And I pray daily for the awakening of the people of America to their divine destiny and why you are here and why you were born in this life. And I trust, as it is my calling, to help you find the answers to those questions so that you can make the most of every moment and year of the rest of your life and come home to God with a good report that you can joyously stand before the court of the sacred fire and hear the divine approbation, well done thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things of thy karma, so I shall make thee ruler over many. According to the Eastern teachings, and it is true, karma necessitates rebirth. Simply because you can't reap all of the effects of your karma in a single lifetime. There's just not enough time to be on the receiving end of the things we do in this life, in this life. There is a misunderstanding among some in the West that the Eastern concept of karma is fatalistic. Many people say to me, oh, you believe in karma, you'll be taking another million years before you get to God. And I say, oh no, that is not the concept of karma. I also believe in the grace of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I expect to balance my karma in this life. But that's getting ahead of my story and I'm going to tell you how you can balance your karma in this life before we're through. The preceding lecture was given by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, world-renowned author and spiritual teacher. The Summit Lighthouse is an international spiritual organization dedicated to universal enlightenment. Founded in 1958, the Summit Lighthouse has been a beacon of truth to thousands worldwide and a leader in new thought spirituality. The preceding program has been brought to you by the Summit Lighthouse. For more information, call 1-800-245-5445 or visit our website at www.tsl.org.
Outside the USA, call 406-848-9500 or write to the Summit Lighthouse, 63 Summit Way, Gardner, Montana, 59030 USA.